although he's here and everyone at home who's watching. A um, couple of things first. We know that there's been some people that don't like the bits on the end of the pews. They've got to stay there, it makes us all ready and ready to go once we can come back into church again. And we will be able to have some of the children in maybe, and they need to be there so that we can continue with our worship as soon as possible. So just don't worry about them, you know, it's just there. And when we're leaving, because um, of where we are in this pandemic, you do need to leave rows, the same as you come up for communion and the students will see you out. It's just one of those things that we're living with at the moment. Don't worry about it. So, let's welcome everybody. It's just a great pleasure to be here. Let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are loving to all and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, and confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray that we may be strengthened by our communion with all the saints. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of the Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for them that unfeignedly love thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And sit for our Bible reading. The Old Testament reading is taken in Revelation, chapter 9, sorry, chapter 7, verse 9. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, 
standing there before the throne of the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and the elders, and four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more and the sun will not strike them, nor in any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the centre of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The New Testament is taken from John and also from Matthew. John 3, verse 1 to 3. See what love the Father has given us, that we shall be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When He is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have hope this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Matthew 5, 1-12 When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to... Is this the Gospel? It is. I will not read the Gospel. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk with them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I was rather looking forward to it hearing the gospel in the dulcet Dagenham tones of David. <laughs> thank you, thank you, it's wonderful to hear it from, from Viv. And so may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, among the priestly skills of which I am most proud uh, is one that has the power to bring both people and material things together. Now, I can see from here that many of you are wearing now something created through this ancient skill. Now, to some, it is a, a field of expertise beyond their capabilities. Uh, to others, it is second nature. The skill of which I speak is knitting. <laughs> knitting. And I want to remind us all today that no matter your age, your background, where you're from, you are called to a ministry of knitting. And yesterday's announcement made that all the more important. And praise God that today is All Saints Day with its message of our being knit together and our calling to knit together. Now, I was taught the rudiments of knitting uh, by a primary school teacher called Mrs. Chatters. And though I can't claim to any great proficiency in knitting, uh, my fumbling attempts have been enough to endow my mother um, with a stuffed knitted Father Christmas from about 1987, and, and I'm too proud of this, the town of Whitford with the sandy floor of its marvellous nativity. Now it's a nativity, as a pun there, uh, created by the Meat and Make group. They were always very welcoming to me and they did assess my relative merits and said, yes, you can contribute to the nativity, but probably best that you just did a simple but it's still there, and I'm very proud of myself. Knitting really came into its own in my ministry, though, when I spent time working in, in a day hospice. And the chance to sit next to people while knitting um, opened up some of the most wonderful conversations I've ever had. Now, for some reason, being confronted by someone in a dog collar sitting opposite you while looking eager does not always lead to the most easy conversation. Um, but when you're sat next to somebody and you're engrossed in your knitting and they're engrossed in their knitting, the conversation can flow, people can open up to each other. Uh, I wonder how many important conversations you've had when you've been side by side. I was trying to think about this. I think some of the most important conversations I've ever had have been in cars. Very rarely are important conversations um, conducted face to face. Knitting, I think, is also very interesting. Uh, it doesn't use any other form of, of fixative, does it? Other than the wool, the yarn itself. Individual strands uh, are transformed into astonishing creative forms. And, as I said, knitting is mentioned in the great collect for All Saints Day for today. And if, as I believe, the craft of knitting has great use in Christian ministry, then this image of knitting in the collect uh, speaks of our holy communion, our unity with difference in the body of Christ. It tells of a body, a community held together not through nails, other than the nails through our Lord's hands, not through glue, but through being knitted together in love. There's no extra additive. We are just knit together by God. Knitted things are held together simply by the relationship between their parts. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. So it is part of our calling, part of the calling of the church to be knit together and to knit together. Paul explains that we who are many are one body in Christ, and slightly uncomfortably, that individually we are members one of another. What does that mean? Individually, we are members one of another. We're not just components in the Christ robot. We are members of the body of Christ. We are utterly interdependent. We need each other, or we are not the body of Christ. Now, in our physical bodies, uh, when parts disintegrate or connective tissue disappears, 
It's often near impossible for it to return. Uh, when I had uh, my toe amputated, I was asked by one child when it would be growing back. Uh, it hasn't grown back yet. Uh, and my surgeon repeatedly used the language of knitting uh, to describe the healing process. He said, oh, we'll be knitted together again in, in six months and then you can go back to playing football. Socially, um, as well as physically, it's incredibly hard to build back the connective tissue. And that tissue is trust and integrity, and mutual understanding and compassion. If we lose that, there's a lot of hard work bringing it back. And I think right now there's a lot of knitting for us disciples to do. The fabric of our, our nation, I think, is increasingly frayed. We are sometimes encouraged by aspects of our lives to set ourselves against each other, whether that's by geography or wealth or education or class or race or politics or gender. I fear that we're becoming unfamiliar with people who are different from us. A trust that took generations and great effort and sacrifice to build is perhaps evaporating. Whether that's in our institutions, in our leaders, in the rule of law, in our constitution as we receive it, in the church, or maybe our trust in different groups of people. Now that process I think was underway before Covid grabbed us. We have been unravelling from each other, I fear, for, for years. But Covid has grabbed the loose threads and is tugging hard. And I'm surely not alone in having tugged the thread and then discovered his wonderful jump and disappeared quite quickly. The pressure and anxiety of the pandemic heightens divisions and tests our patience with each other. I know only too well that the simple act of coming to church is not simple anymore. And it continues, this dreadful disease, to disproportionately affect some communities, some races, some groups, and the, the evidence of that is irrefutable. So are we just stumbling into a very dark place where we only get on with people who hold the same views to us. The thought of that bores me very, very profoundly. Most of my friends don't share my uh, Christian faith. Many of them have profoundly different political views from me, but they remain my friends. And when we talk, I hope that I'm open to them and I listen to them. But increasingly, social media and other aspects of society tells us that you just can't get on with those who are uh, different from you. And it's not just between political parties, it's within political parties. We see in both political parties uh, that uh, there have been profound differences. Uh, old traditions have, have, have been dispensed with. Christ says, something very different there. He says, be knitted together and become knitters. He sought out and he walked alongside all. He came into contact with the rulers and he came into contact with the lepers. He came into contact with the honoured and he came into contact with the disreputable. And guess what? He wants us to do exactly the same. So we can't allow ourselves to disappear into to silos or to self-selecting groups of people who are just like us. I want to be out or, or online among people who are different to me so I can learn from them. I can see the image of God in them because it's there. Jesus says, be alongside, see people for who they are, give them a compassionate ear, be humble, be open to them, be ready to learn from them what God is doing in them. If we dismiss individuals or groups, we dismiss God's power to work through them. But if we do those things, then the process of being knitted together in the spirit has already begun. Now I know things are about to change once again 
become very difficult once again for our physical interactions. But we can still knit. Whether we do that by just simply being on our knees at the right time each day or any time each day, or whether we are making calls to people, maybe forming a, a, a bubble with somebody who is alone. There are ways to knit in even the most difficult circumstances. That we don't need to agree about everything in order to be knitted together. But we do need to be able to challenge the things that get in the way of our, our knitting. And greed, and hardness of heart, and contempt, and disingenuity, and lying are around us. There's a worldview that that sees all attempts to knit together uh, as something that we should treat with suspicion. There's a worldview uh, that believes that the forces of the market can't possibly work for good or bad, so we can just trust it to shape our society fairly. It's a worldview that worships itself, and it acts as if our deep connections to each other count for, for nothing. But these past months, and I'm afraid these months to come have shown us and will show us in our pain that we need each other. And we need effective and fair social institutions, churches and political institutions. And any attempt to, to kind of put a line down the middle of our lives as if we kind of come to prayer on a Sunday and the rest of our lives is something different is not being knit together. We need to knit together. We need each other. And if we need each other, we need to understand that our differences don't have to stop any knitting. That piece of revelation gives us a glimpse of what God finally intends for the world. And it is not a uniformity, a sameness. It's an image of a community of difference and vibrance. I looked. And there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before God's throne. I want to see that for myself. So let's just take up Jesus' challenge and build up and encourage and get to know and knit however we can. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us join together to affirm our faith. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnated from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man there. For our sake, he was crucified and was on his He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated.
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. His worship of the Holy Son is worshipped and glorified. We are spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and sovereign church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father.
Lord, we bring to you those whose lives are darkened by pain, fear or weariness, those awaiting results of tests, those awaiting surgery, particularly those which have been delayed due to the current situation, and all who are in particular need of your healing and love. We give you thanks for the many skilled hands that you provide to care for those in need, and pray that you will support and uphold them. And we pray now for all those who have asked for our prayers and are named on our new sheet this week. For Beatrix, Paul, Margaret, Christine, Tony, Keith, Peter, Doreen, Sheila, Carol, Kathy, Joan, Graham, Tony, Margaret, Ashley, Wynne, Frida, Ernest, Roy, Barry, John, Maya, Barbara, Doug, John, Hilary, Maureen, Graham, Pam, Florence, Erin, Angus, Chris, Derek, Rosemary, and Ruth. And we remember now in a moment of quietness all who we know who are in need of your love at this time. Lord, that your love will enfold them all, your peace will calm and refresh them, and your healing will bring them tranquility and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all the saints, those recognised by the church, and those known only to a few and to you. We praise you for their example and rejoice that they live in your heaven with every tear wiped away. We call to mind those whose anniversaries fall at this time, and we think of those who have recently died, of Tim Soames, Barbara Underwood, Tony Christie, Martin Crockett, Sally Dunn, and Jennifer Baker. We ask that you be with the family and friends of all who mourn their loved ones parting. May they rejoice in the love they share together and be strengthened by your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you can take us as we are and transform us by your life in us. We ask that you clear our lives of all that is not of you to enable your goodness to shine through the colours of our personalities and gifts you have given us. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Bernard and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we have this lovely baptism today for Oliver. We also pray for all the children who have, oh, and adults who have been baptised in this church and we're thinking today of those over the last five years who have been baptised in November. And so we pray for Emma and Isaac and Liam and Daniel and Oliver. Dear Lord, we ask that you are with them. We pray that they are hearing your word. And we pray for their parents and grandparents and extended family, that they are bringing them up to know you, Lord. 
And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind them all together and complete the whole, let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. We say together, to you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints, where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nation, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine our poor may be for us the body and Christ of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are one, we are one body, because of the share of the Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us mercy. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we pray together for those with those at home and here today, and we knit these communities together in the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the parents and the children you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you to I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Day by day. Amen. 
God, the source of all holiness and giver of all good things, may we who have shared at this table as strangers and pilgrims here on earth be welcomed with all your saints to the heavenly feast on the day of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. without emotion because we are called to weep with others as they weep but um, it's become clear that public worship will have to cease once again in this building from the 5th of November until such time as we come out of the national lockdown um, we will be hosting a, a funeral during that time and uh, happily it appears that that can still um, go ahead we will continue to broadcast from here on Sundays and uh, Wednesdays and when the final regulations have become apparent I'll, I'll let you know more. Please pray for the wardens, we had some wonderful prayers today and I'm so grateful for the prayers for the ministry team and, and for me. Uh, the wardens have a lot on their plate, poor David had to deal with a water leak this week knowing that we had a baptism on Sunday which we need water for. Um, he did brilliantly but seriously we must pray for each other. And this knitting together is a good reminder that actually it's not the ministry team that do the ministry. Uh, they help to make sure the ministry gets done. So keep in touch with people during this time. And if you need uh, uh, to be in contact, you must, please don't wait for us. If you need us, please be in contact with the, the ministry team. That means that there'll be no services here next Sunday. There will be an uh, act of remembrance recorded before lockdown watch at home at uh, 11. Please don't come to the War Memorial at 11. Um, I will be laying some wreaths on my own uh, according to the uh, instructions, but um, you'll be able to share a proper act of remembrance at home at 11, 9.45am. There'll be another act of remembrance in our broadcast um, service. And at 6.30 there'll be uh, a lovely uh, reflective service put together by Simon and Maggie and others. Um, but today is a joyful day and the last service here is going to be a baptism and to, to hear grandmother's tears earlier was very moving to me. Now people here who have been baptised during this time of pandemic as well, uh, Johnny and them. That is a reminder of the hope that we have. God is not going away, the Holy Spirit is not going away and we're going to see uh, that in action in our baptism in a, in a few moments time. So please, let's do all we can to support each other, to keep in touch with each other, to pray for each other, and to pray in thanksgiving for the goodness that still flows through God, even in times um, like this. God who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you all. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.